So hey guys, today we're going to be talking about deck building a little today. And in general, uh, there, there's one thing I really like about Yu-Gi-Oh in particular. So when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, we have like a bajillion Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something like, what was it, like 16,000, 17,000, 18,000, 20,000 or something like just a, a ridiculous amount of cards in general. Not really sure how many we are at currently, but yeah, whatever. It is a massive amount of cards. And also this reload function is super annoying. Like if I type in, I don't know, Utopia, and then wait a bit, it'll, it'll just automatically go here, despite me not pressing enter or anything, but yeah. Oh, refreshed again. It just refreshes every now and then for no reason, but okay. So, uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, with all of these cards, we essentially pretty much always, uh, we'll have a card that does exactly the thing, uh, we're looking for. Like, if I want, I don't know, let's say a card that banishes specifically, let's say, a card from my opponent's extra deck, but, like, let, let's see randomly do do we have a card that does this well I, I believe the answer was actually uh yes was it this one no uh wait or was it uh no N not this card if i recall correctly it should look like some kind of boat so if we type in banish extra deck we should be able to find it and I believe it is also an XYZ monster, so let's do that. And see if we can find it. Pendron Sanction, Tregulus, nope. Uh, Aegeon, the Sea Castrum. During either player's turn, you can banish one random face down monster from your opponent's extra deck. Face up, and if you do, this card's attack becomes equal to the banished monsters. So this will just randomly banish one of your opponents, specifically their, uh, Face down extra deck monsters, so this would not be banish pendulum monsters randomly. And then it'll be banished face up, and then you will gain attack equal to the uh, banished monsters attack, whatever that was. And then there's this during either player's turn, you can detach one XYZ uh, material from this card, then target one of your opponent's banished fusion, synchro, or XYZ monsters return to the extra deck. And if you do, destroy one monster your opponent controls with the same uh, monster card type. But important thing we're, we're going to care about here. This can essentially uh, banish two of your opponent's uh, extra deck monsters. Although it is face up, it will still banish two of your opponent's like cards here, right? And the jank thing is, th this is completely uh, random. So, not as good as certain other cards, but... Yeah, th this exists for whatever reason, and... If you were looking for an effect like this, uh, he here you go, I guess. And then let's say if we want, I don't know, a monster that is able to specifically mess with our opponent's uh, top deck for the turn, we can kind of manipulate that, right? Uh, and also, uh, let's say we want to do it in a particular way. So let's say we're doing something pretty insane, okay? So I want to resolve something like I, I don't know may, maybe not despot base but let's go with maybe mech knight scars scars wouldn't shuffle so okay let's go with scar so if i want to resolve mech knight scar but i want to guarantee somehow that my opponent is not going to be able to draw into anything meaningful maybe we're completely insane so we'll actually mill our opponent's cards right we'll mill some of their cards and we'll summon back like a monster that's not so great like maybe an ash blossom drift spring or something or a maxi and summon it to uh their field and then we'll put it from the field to the top of our opponent's deck here and how we can do that is with uh redoer redoer would allow us to stack this way and the idea of the mill is then we'd probably get be able to attempt to get a selection of cards we can bring back from our opponent's um, graveyard onto the field to uh, spin back with Redoer. 
so we have more of a selection than just using a card that uh, would allow us to look at the top of our opponent's deck and manipulate it. So assuming there was a card like that, right? Which there probably is. That could be a little bit less efficient because we can mill, like, our opponent quite a few cards. Uh, yeah. Mill quite a few cards for them. And then... The thing with Redoer is... Redoer does have this effect, right? Place one face-up card your opponent controls on the top of the deck. So... To do this effect, we would then need specifically, um... A trap to be attached to Time Thief Redoer. So uh, how would we go about that? Is there a way to easily get a trap onto Redoer? Well, there's a really kind of efficient way. We could use uh, Shade Brigandine, I guess, right? And Shade Brigandine is a level 4 trap, which is perfect for making Redoer. Uh, and we would be able to um, special summon Shade Brigandine and then... Uh, this would just happen to be attached onto Redoer then, and then we'd be able to do something goofy like this. Like, any kind of, like, relatively niche interaction you want to try to, like, build a deck to do, it is just going to be possible. Because there are just so many cards that kind of enable this. Like, we don't have to say, like, this is necessarily going to be good to do. It's just simply that you can do this, which is pretty crazy to think about, right? So that, that's pretty cracked. And then, let's see. We go with... Uh, Time Thief. I, I think there might be something in Time Thief that also might enable this a little bit. Um, uh, Flyback. Yeah, you can banish this card from the graveyard, then target one Time Thief. XYZ monster you control, attach one card from your opponent's graveyard to it as material. That would be another way we could kind of get a uh, trap onto Redoer. A little less consistent because it requires us to like uh, force our opponent to kind of have a trap in the graveyard somehow. But, which is like rough. I, I guess most people play Imperm so you, know, you have that going for you. Then I think there was also maybe a card that just attaches me. Right? Was it this one? Oh yeah. Flyback. But we, that is the effect on this trap so Assuming we want to fly back a quick retrograde, that would be a little bit hard to uh, activate on the first turn, right? So that, not, not necessarily the best option, I would say. But, uh, okay, what else? L let's think of something uh, super jank and kind of stupid. Alright, how about we want to make a deck that, I don't know, Forces our opponent to just like attack a high attack point monster. Uh, could we do that? Yeah, uh, I guess we can, right? So one of the things we're looking for is uh, must attack, right? So is there a monster that can force our opponent to attack? Well, there there is a way to technically force this, so. Let's just go with this, for example. This would work, I guess. So if we have uh, Memento and Cranium Burst, and then we have just like a high attack point monster like Tekutlika, Combined Creation, right? So let, let's say we have this in attack, and this set, we just flip this over uh, in, I don't know, like draw phase or something. But we also give our opponent like tokens with probably this right so we use like black garden and we give our opponent a bunch of monsters and then this will specifically force our opponent to attack into uh combined creation here but oh no our opponent here uh what, what if they link summon our tokens off or something well i'll just assume they, they won't be able to do a worthwhile tribute summon so i won't factor that in so, let, let's say we have this, and we can actually search it off of uh, Garden Rose Maiden as well, you know, the um, Black Garden, if we want to search it that way. There's also uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon and whatnot, but okay, we can access Black Garden and we just have to summon like Special Summon or Summon, I believe. 
five times and they'll give our opponent a bunch of rose tokens. But uh, anyway, the next thing we want to make sure is our opponent should not be able to special summon anything. So, yo, now this is where that's that I, I wouldn't really call it hot tech. I'm really disgusting tech comes back in. So, uh, okay. Uh, anybody remember perhaps sending Jaugen off of Verte as you make Albion and then we can Albion special summon Jaugen to our field and then give our opponent like a Fallen of Albaz or something in probably their last slot after like Black Garden I guess right so uh yeah that, that that's probably miserable and then our opponent would be uh, locked by the Jaugen, unable to special summon monsters, and the only thing they'd probably be able to do is activate spells, traps, or normal summon, well, specifically tribute summon a monster, because the idea is that we fill up all of their zones. And then we put the tokens in attack position, probably, right? And then they'll just have to attack into our uh, combined creation and die here. So that that's one way about well one way we can go about this and um there are a lot of different ways to kind of get the same effect right where we do the same kind of thing like for example if we were to look at like bish balkan ftk in general like all of those bish balkan ftks they all can kind of do the same thing but the way you get there is not going to necessarily be the same right I believe there's like a way to fish Balkan in Ad Emancipator and like uh Punk and then something else I don't remember. But essentially there's just like a bajillion ways to fish Balkan your opponent. Uh, oh yeah, Sword Soul. So Sword Soul can as well, right? But uh yeah. In general, there's a lot of kinda interesting things you can do. If we want to go with like a more concrete strategy that is going to be a bit smarter, there is also the idea of, um, I guess, a deck that uh, is focused on one type of removal or something. That might be a bit more like manageable. So let's say we want a deck that specifically focuses on uh, banishing cards. We have that, so we can go like Kishtira, and Kishtira is pretty interesting that in the sense that um, because of uh, Unicorn and Fenrir being able to special summon themselves, as long as you don't uh, lock yourself, you should be able to technically do a Kishtira combo after a secondary combo, like or whatever other combo you have in your deck. So for example, with Unicorn here, uh, I can start by special summoning Unicorn, add Theosis, and then uh, th that's just going to be combo and we can make a Rise Heart. But like, we have not normal summoned and we're not locked or anything. So at this point we can do uh, essentially whatever we want, right? So we could do normal summon Snake Eye Ash to uh, make a guy. We could do... Um, Normal summon uh, Vanquish Soul Rosin. We can do, uh, let's see, normal summon, uh, I guess if we really want to, this wouldn't be that good because they, they don't really work well with macro type effects, but normal summon uh, Meluseek, and then we can go through that line, or we could do something like normal summon Ibli, link off Ibli, and then uh, that doesn't quite play around Imperm, does it? I mean, it can if your opponent isn't ready for it. But, uh, yeah. That would potentially work. And we could be solid. I mean, if your opponent actually played around you already having Theosis and was holding for uh, Fenrir, I guess that would work, yeah. But, okay. We also have the idea of... Uh, let's see... If we want to remove like a bunch of monsters off of our opponent's board, there's like 
Uh, there are options like uh, Sphere Mode, Lava Golem, Kaijus. And each of those has like its own different niche, like if your opponent has a really dumb board, uh, Sphere Mode can do the trick, right? But if your opponent doesn't even have three monsters on uh, their field, Lava Golem would be better. Or um, potentially a Kaiju might be the better option if you do need your normal summon over like Lava Golem situationally, so that's pretty neat. But uh, uh, let's see. Back, back to this. What else can we mix with this to do some uh, banishing? So with Kishdira, if we want to uh, just banish something, we just have to remove it off the field, honestly, if we already have like a unicorn. So just any kind of like removal in general, like sent to graveyard destruction, just becomes like a banish. So we just want something that can do probably just destruction, and that would be good enough, honestly. So, um, what can do just like destroy a card or destroy like all cards your opponent controls? Well, hmm. If we want to just go with uh, that, then why not this? Grandkids. Uh, let's check real quick. Must be Fusion Summon. You can tribute this card. Oh, it's just tribute. Okay, that's fine. So, if we had Prank Kids, uh, Prank Kids would be fine, right? We can just like special summon Unicorn and then normal summon a Prank Kid and then go like full combo. And then summon uh, Battle Butler uh, in, in the next turn, I guess. And then we can just activate Battle Butler effect. This will wipe our opponent's monsters. And instead of destroying them, they will be banished instead. So that, that's one way to go about it. There are probably like a bajillion, a billion, a more billion, whatever uh, ways we can kind of uh, remove cards to and then bash them with our uh, our eyes art or whatever, right? So that that just works, I guess. And th this allows for some cool strategies, degenerate strategies, dumb strategies, whatever. Th there's just a lot of strategies that you can uh, utilize and play around with, which makes the game a bit more interesting. So just for example, if I were playing a deck with only going first cards, and I just set up a really disgustingly strong end board, right? My deck now has a really bad weakness to specifically FTKs. So FTKs uh, or first turn kills, right? If my opponent loses the game on the first duel and they are unable to play a card, that, that could be unironically optimal against certain lists, right? So if we have a deck that is made specifically for going second and they don't really have much, for me, right? So let's say maybe the only hand trap they run is actually just Ash Blossom Joe Spring and potentially Imperm. If I have a way to like play around the Imperm, maybe I give my opponent like a monster or something relatively early on in the combo. Then the only thing my opponent can do is Ash Blossom Joe Spring me. And then I might have the counter to that being like called by the grave or cross out, or it just doesn't matter. Or perhaps I set up a monster negate relatively early on as well. And then I do some kind of win condition or I burn my opponent to death somehow on the first turn. What, whatever the case, right? That actually can become a valid and efficient strategy against certain other strategies, but maybe not so much against like some other certain strategies, like ones that will play more hand traps, in which case we won't be able to get into anything, right? So, yeah. And th there's a lot of like mind gaming and like just understanding of the cards and the card pool in general and how like uh, that all works right which is pretty neat in my opinion right so if we want to get really crazy with it let's see let's go with i don't know let's go with an engine i really like so it is a really niche engine that a lot of people probably haven't seen. I don't know. Maybe if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll you'll know this one. We have Dark Greffer, Danger Nessie. So 
there are a lot of niche, interesting, kind of like cool interactions as well, just in general, right? So the idea is if we open Dark Greffer and Danger Nessie together, we have actually a pretty uh, strong combo line that we can do. So we're going to start off with specifically um, Special Summoning Dark Greffer by discarding Danger Nessie with its condition here. And then this will trigger Danger Nessie's effect in the graveyard because it has been discarded. And this will allow me to add a danger monster from my deck to the hand. And in which case, uh, a lot of the time you'll be adding like Danger Jackal up here. And then Dark Griffer is now in the field. And this is an inherent summon, so you can't max see this, which is also neat. But all right. So Dark Greffer is now on the field, and we can now discard a Dark Monster to send a Dark Monster from our deck to the graveyard. So now we will use Danger Jackalope, and this means we can summon a uh, special summon a monster off of our Danger Jackalope. So in this case, maybe we'll go with, I don't know, uh, sure, Mothman. So we'll go with Mothman, and then now Dark Greffer can send any Dark Monster from the deck to the graveyard. There are a lot of options, but this is literally well i mean of course there are a lot of options because this is literally a any dark monster in the game Yu -Gi -Oh. so if we don't have another uh, dark monster we can do for example um zephros if we send zephros we can then just return um our danger mothman in this case so when we resummon our dark griffer it'll have the ability to discard mothman but in general mothman's not that great for this so we would be better off with, like most other cards. So we could even use a Suchinoko. We could use um, Chupacabra. And Chupacabra is good here, I guess, because we can technically bring back Danger Nessie. And Danger Nessie might be like a good level for something that we might be trying to do. I don't know. It's, it, it's situational. It depends. But either way, what we can do here is... We can then just make Dugaris with like either Zephros Dark Reffer or Danger Mothman Dark Reffer. If we have an additional dark card we want to put into the graveyard, then we would use like Dark Griffer plus Mothman, and then we would send a card uh, from our uh, deck to the graveyard. And then we can make Dugaris, Dugaris effect, skip your uh, next main phase one also special summon a monster from your graveyard in defense position so we'll detach first which allows us to uh, detect dark griffer and this does not target so then we can special summon back our dark griffer in this case and dark griffer has no hard once per turn and this does not negate so then we can dark griffer to send the card from our hand and also one additional dark from our uh, deck to the graveyard so this is a pretty track combo I enjoy like playing. The only downside to this combo specifically is of course you, you need to open uh, uh, both of these cards together. You need Danger Nessie and Dark Griffer together. If not, you can still kind of make it work, but this is the most mileage we can get out of uh, Dark Griffer as far as I'm aware. And just for a few ideas, ju just to have some fun with it, you know, we, we could also send Jinso off of this if we really want to, so... Uh, Danger Nessie gets sent, we add Jackalope, and then we can uh, send Jinzo, and then Jackalope effect triggers to summon Mothman, Mothman, Dark Greffer, Dugaris, and then we can uh, Dugaris effect to special summon back Jinzo, and then we also have Dugaris as like link material, so we can just link this off next turn. But uh, there's also... The idea here that Dark Griffer does not take up our normal summon, so it's the same kind of deal with Kishtira where uh, you can just do this and do something else essentially. So, yeah, I think that is pretty damn cool. And Jinzo might not be the best option, but just like another idea we can have here is we could do like Send Heart Horror, so we would have like. Jinzo and also like a potential Orcus line we could do like this. So uh yeah. There are a lot of insane like niche combos, techs, and synergies just all across the board, and 
uh, if, if there's a niche effect you want, th there's probably a card that does something similar to what you want, or something like it. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, let, let's see. How about a card that allows us to uh, specifically uh, prevent our opponent from playing that card? Just, uh, I, I believe it's this one. Yeah. Th th this can prevent our opponent from activating whatever card for the rest of the duel so th this is hilarious right so bash one card from your hand neither player can activate cards or the effects of cards with that name for the rest of this duel so if we were able to loop armageddon designator technically we could make it so our opponent could not activate any cards or the effects of cards for the rest of this duel like if you think about it in that sense right armageddon designator if you were able to like loop this and also, like, essentially more or less banish all of your opponent's cards. Well, like, all, at least one of each, right? With Armageddon Designator. This could uh, just lock your opponent entirely out playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. The only thing they would be able to use is, let's see. Uh-huh. Neither player can activate cards or effects. So they can normal summon monsters. Or inherent summon monsters, right? Or does that count as an effect? I, I, I don't even know what that counts as but okay um uh, just jank ass stupid things like this technically like within the realm of possibility but w which is just crazy to think about this card here but i mean if i want to do a little bit of trolling i guess what what we can do here hmm. what what is the dumbest card we can banish off of armageddon designator honestly hmm yeah Pretty rough to think about here because we do need the card to banish so if we play it in our own deck we're, we're playing it in our own deck and that could be a problem but then there's the idea of also getting the card from our opponent which is technically possible so um pr pretty interesting all things considered i guess so uh yeah that's all i got for you guys today and uh if you have any interesting text or just cards you think with like the most like awkward odd niche like perhaps our mccann designator um I, I don't remember the name of this card but there's a card that specifically if it negates a spell that spell cannot be used for the rest of the duel and then there's also a card that uh, just prevents uh spells from being activated for that turn white howling just wh whatever interesting cards you might know feel free to share in the comments below and uh, yeah, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.